Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Boundless 2020. I'm Kristen, the Customer Success Manager at Nutshell, and I'm honored to be your host for today. This is our second annual Boundless event, and the theme for this year is Above and Beyond. All day long, brilliant speakers from the world of sales, marketing, customer support, and customer success will present sessions on how to create phenomenal customer experiences that will help you acquire more customers and keep those customers longer. A couple of housekeeping notes to start. Our live chat is open all day. Please use it to discuss the sessions with other attendees. And if you have any questions for the speakers, please drop them in the Q&A window. We're going to leave a few minutes available after every live session for questions directly from our viewers. By the way, if you were here at Boundless last year, why don't you use this chat to say hi to the first timers? We also encourage you to post your thoughts on Twitter or LinkedIn during the event. Or use those channels to submit questions for the speakers. Please use the hashtag Boundless2020 so we can find those questions and comments easily. And finally, we wanted to say thanks to two of our wonderful sponsors, Underground Printing and Cahoots. Underground Printing has been Nutshell's swag provider for years, and we highly recommend using them if you need some custom apparel or branded goodies for your own company. Cahoots is downtown Ann Arbor's premier co-working space for tech companies and startups, and it's where us Nutshellers come to work every day. We'd like to send a special thanks to the Cahoots team for lending us the use of their event space for today. All right, folks, we've got a great lineup for you, and we're going to kick it off with the ruling king of sales himself, Jeffrey Gittimer. Jeffrey is a world-renowned sales speaker and author who has sold millions of copies of his books worldwide, including the New York Times bestsellers, The Little Red Book of Selling, The Sales Bible, and The Little Black Book of Connections. Jeffrey co-hosts the weekly podcast, Sell or Die, where he and his wife, Jennifer gluckow Gittimer, share their sales and personal development knowledge. And Jeffrey also offers sales and professional development training online through the Gittimer Learning Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not awake yet, you will be soon. Please welcome our opening keynote speaker, Jeffrey Gittimer. Thank you very much. Thank you very kindly. In 1972, I watched the movie called Challenge to America. I watched it 200 times as I was gaining my positive attitude. I watched it every morning, I rented a, it was a 16 millimeter movie. I rented it, I rented the thing for a year. The movie starts out with eight words in the form of a question that are only answered by each individual who hears them. The question is, what does it take to become a success? This is exactly what I heard. What does it take to become a success? By the late, great Glenn W. Turner. To a thousand people, it's a thousand different reasons, ideas, and things. It's answers that are different for everybody. And I'd like you to take a moment out there in nutshell listening land to write down yours. What do you think it's going to take for you to become a success? Whoa. See, that's a deep question to start your day because you normally think about it in terms of how many cold calls do I have to make? What's on my agenda for today? No, no. There's, you have to operate from a big picture or you can never get down to the small picture. I'm about to give you some of those answers and answer some of the elements that will make you successful. Many of those elements were penned more than 100 years ago. I'm going to tell you some of what it takes, but you're not going to like the answers. Let me explain why. Because it doesn't involve anything having to do with beer or television. And I know you, you watch Netflix at night and drink a beer. Big mistake, huge waste of time, and waste of your success time. I'm not going to change the world, but I can help change your world. Which do you think is more important, the world or your world? And which do you spend more time in? You spend way more time in the world, and you should be at least equal with the world and your world. This is a sign I saw outside of a, I was in a parking lot in Coos Bay, Oregon. We can't change the world, but we can change your oil. <laughs> the parking lot was full of customers because they decided to be honest. Jeffrey, can I have your slides? No, you can't have my slides. They're my slides. There'll probably be a replay of this, but don't please just 
take a photo of any slide this morning that resonates with you and share it with your friends or share it with someone who you think can benefit from it. But I'm not going to send you my slide deck the same way you're not going to give me your television. If I ask, can I have your TV? No, it's your TV. But here's where you can find me. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but you don't really care about that. All you want to know is where can you find me? Everything from Twitter down to Sell or Die, the podcast, and everything social in between. When you get the feeling that you'd like more of me, then you go to this bit.ly, which will probably be in the chat, and you can get my um, document. It's like an e-book on good, better, best. How can you strive to be good, strive to be better, and ultimately get to be best? Because when you're best, then you're not second best, because second best in sales is first loser. What are you going to talk about? And then 45 minutes, but I'm going to talk about historical things because everyone, it's on everyone's mind right now. Where did the flu come from? I'm going to give you the origin of the swine flu, which you probably do not know. It started here. And I add humor to every single thing that I do. We lead with humor. Make the prospect laugh and think within the first minute of your talk, or you'll spend the rest of your talk trying to recover. Not a joke. Humor, big difference. Honk if you love Jesus. Text while driving if you want to meet him. That's funny. And you need to add more funny to what you do because humor makes people like you and feel comfortable enough to buy from you. If you can make them laugh, you can make them buy. Chapter 8 of the Little Red Book of Selling. My WTF is what the fun. And I, I always lead with humor. I teach my kids to lead with humor. It's the best way to go. If you can make people smile, it's tacit approval. The theme of my webinar is how to create your own competitive advantage. And I think that you need to understand that from your perspective. You think it's something that you have that the competition does not have, and nothing could be further from the truth. But first realize that we're in the biggest boom time economy in the history of mankind. And I don't know whether you're participating or not, but you should be. And now is the time when not only is there lots of business available, but there's also lots of little creepy little competitors coming in who you hate. All of a sudden, everybody wants to be in your backyard. And I'm challenging you, you need that competitive advantage in order to thrive in this economy. And this webinar is about how to take advantage of it, and how to take advantage of you. But my first question is, how dedicated are you to actually getting better? Well, what do you do in the morning when you wake up? Have a cup of coffee, take a shower, get to work on time? <laughs> Big mistake. What's your morning regimen? Do you have a morning regimen that will lead you to success all throughout the day? I have a morning regimen. I'm going to share it with you. It's worked for me for the past 25 years. I do it every day, seven days a week. Never fail. I wake up every day and I write, I read, I prepare. And that causes me to think and create. Sometimes I do it in a different order. Sometimes I read, write, prepare. Sometimes I write and prepare like I prepared for this webinar. But everything I do causes me to think and create, and that creativity is the hallmark, literally the foundation for my success. I'm in control of it the same way you are in control of yours. I have a daily ongoing commitment to learning and earning. I just finished this book called Get Shit Done. It's a classic. It's all about productivity. How do you measure your productivity? Why do you procrastinate? Whoa. Well, you procrastinate for a bunch of reasons, but I'm going to just throw something obvious at you. Distractions are the Achilles heel of productivity, especially in this time. Everything that you do causes some form of distraction, moth to a light bulb. But I'm going to give you a truth that's painful right now. Your phone dings more than it rings. 
And you have to put yourself in the position where you can overcome that by simply setting it aside when you're trying to be productive. That will add at least an hour a day to your life. In 1984, the late, great Steve Jobs put out a, a series of commercials called Think Different. And I want you to think about your sales process right now, because I'm going to give you a new way to think about who you are and who you want to become. You have to think response. You have to think outcome. You have to think help rather than sell. You have to think serve rather than sell. You have to think customer and relationship rather than sale. Those are the elements that will get you farther, faster. And the challenge that you have is remembering everything, and you can't. That's why you have a CRM. That's why Nutshell works for you, because it, it puts together all the facts that you need in order to be able to concentrate on how you can help. Where is your concentration on sales and relationships? That's where you need to focus your time. Where is your sales data to help you make sales and build relationships? Some of you have a CRM that some of you use Nutshell, and it's not up to date. What are you thinking? Do you want to make the sale or do you want to create an outcome? Whoa, that's a big question. You see, I don't go after the sale. I go after the customer. That way I create an outcome. And the outcome is what happens after the sale. Now, you can't see me, but I'm a little fat. I have about eh, 20 pounds on me that I wish I didn't have. And don't be laughing at that because you're probably a little bit fat. You have 10 or 20 pounds on you that you wish you didn't have. We are so, we are so overweight as a nation. If we were invaded by enemies, we couldn't run away. But you go to the gym and the guy at the front desk says, hey, you don't have to exercise today because um, I have this pill. And the pill simulates all, the inner, all, all of the, the exercise that you have and gives you even a 45-minute cardio. You want the pill or you want the sweat? Well, personally, I want the pill. And most people want the pill because you don't want to exercise. You want the outcome. You want what happens after the exercise the same way your customers want the outcome. They don't want to buy a copier machine. They want to make copies. This is John Varvatos, one of our clothiers in the, in the country. He's got a bunch of stores. And um, I used to shop at this store here in Soho. A couple of years ago, I went into the store and I said, wow, that's really a nice shirt. But New York City, 10% sales tax. I live in Charlotte. They don't have a store here. I can eliminate the sales tax if I ask them to ship it. I said, can you ship it? And they said, oh, sure, Mr. Gittimer, no problem. This arrived, sold, delivered. Now, I'm challenging you. By, by the way, I called John Varvatos. He did not call me back. So I let my 110,000 Twitter followers know that he did not call me back. If someone calls you, you call them back no matter what. We're cool on that. But oftentimes you sell something and it gets delivered messed up. That is the outcome, not the sale. Outcome is what happens after the customer buys. Outcome is what happens after the customer takes ownership. That's when they begin to use what it is that you've sold. They don't want to buy your stuff. They want to have the best long-term outcome. Got it? Here's what customers want. They want the best. They want great service. They want to produce more. <clears throat> they want to profit more. They want honesty from you. They want help. And they want to win. Now, no place in there is that they want to be sold because people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. And your job is to create the atmosphere where they want to buy because they feel like the value exceeds the price and they feel like in the end, they're going to win. Customers want to win. Help customers win is the three-word secret to sales success. The main reason salespeople fail or only reach a level of mediocrity is that they don't concentrate on the customer's outcome. They're only focused on their own income. Oh, 
Take a picture of that. So I'm going to share with you this morning how to make sales for the next 10 years. That's a good number because you get all those stupid emails in December, how to have your best year ever. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. Or you, why would you want to have your best year ever when you could have your best decade ever? So I wrote this book called The Sales Manifesto because I was sick and tired of old world selling tactics that don't work anymore. And I began with this. Weak salespeople look at quotas and become fearful. Mediocre salespeople look at quotas as a goal. Manifesto salespeople look at quotas and laugh. <laughs> the manifesto sale, my sales perspective, soon to be your sales perspective, flies in the face of traditional selling because I'm disruptive. I looked it up the other day. I've been disruptive since before Gary Vaynerchuk was born. You see this stuff? Cold calling, find the pain, challenge the prospect. I'm seriously challenge the prospect. What kind of crap is that? I'm a 28-year-old salesperson. I'm going to challenge a 55-year-old CEO. He's going to throw me out of his place. Pitch the product, close the sale, customer satisfaction. It's all bullshit. And you have to recognize that there's a new way to sell right now. And I'm going to share with you exactly what it is because it will last, I guarantee you, for the next 10 years. Here's the manifesto sale in a nutshell. Your next 10 years of sales are going to come directly from this. Your value attraction. Your social attraction. Find the pleasure, not the pain. What pains me is none of your business. But if my kid plays t-ball in the same league as your kid plays t-ball, we have a link. If I went to the same college, if I like the same sports teams, we have a link. Ask emotional questions, not qualifying questions. Discover the customer's motive to buy. Why they want to buy is a billion times more powerful than how to sell. If your slide deck doesn't contain questions that lead to a motive to buy, hit the delete button. Confirm the urgency of the offer that you make to the customer. Give after the sale value. In other words, continue to stay in contact with them. Earn customer loyalty as a result of it. Notice the word earn, not ask for, and earn referrals, not ask for. This is a formula that will help you make sales for the next 10 years. It's a strategy, it's not a system. I want you to go slow on this slide because it gives you the secret of selling. You don't give information and make a sales presentation. You transfer confidence and create perceived value. If I don't perceive a value, if I don't perceive a difference, then all that's left is price and I will buy from anyone. Attract with message, engage with value, connect with emotion, and sell with proof, either video or social. I tweeted it at 6.30 in the morning. I only got 15 retweets and 38 likes. I only engaged about 12,000 people for free. What were you doing at 6.30 in the morning? So I'm gonna take it deeper and I'm gonna to present to you your personal nutshell. Because if you understand these next elements, you're going to understand the science of selling, not the art of selling. There is no art of selling. Well, maybe there is, it's never letting the other person feel like they're being sold. But the bottom line is, selling is, a re selling is a repeatable science, and you can master it. Here goes. Your yes attitude and personal belief put you on a mental path to success. Your understanding of why customers buy your product or service gives you sales insight. Your face-to-face -face networking gets you contact, leads, and builds relationships. It also can lead to referrals. Your social networking builds attraction, engagement, followers, and connections. Your use of business social media builds your online presence, your reputation, and your Google juice. How do customers see you and perceive you? Your combined, your website, your company's website, Combined with your personal website, your blog, 
your YouTube channel, your social presence, and your value messages from what you write gets you positioned and known in your market on Google and in the mind of your customer. You cannot rely on your company to do this or your marketing people to do this. This is your responsibility while you're watching Netflix and drinking beer like a fool. Your internet position and Google presence gets you branded, known, and respected. Your personal Google presence. Why don't you Google yourself right now or Google yourself when this is over? And if you're not the first 10 pages, something's drastically wrong. Your attraction gets you known and called. Your perceived value created that attraction. It's value attraction, not the law of attraction. Now we're at the beginning of the sales call. All of that is the preamble. That assumes that you're ready to go make the sale because the same way you're researching me, dude, I'm researching you. Your name gets you in the door. The doormat says Google. Mother Google knows all. She knows she's Santa Claus. Knows if you're sleeping, knows if you're awake, knows if you're bad, knows if you're good, and reads all your mail. Your reputation precedes you and the customer Googles you as you walk in the door. They're going to look for your presence all over the internet because it's there and it never goes away. They're going to look you up on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. They're going to see if you're on Instagram. They're going to see if you have a website, a blog. They're going to look at your YouTube channel. And if it's no place, then you are no place. Your customer wants to do business with a somebody, not a nobody. Your deep belief in what you sell will create emotional engagement with the prospect. You have to believe that you work for the best company in the world. You have to believe you offer the greatest products and services in the world. You have to believe that you're the greatest person in the world. You have to believe you can differentiate yourself from your competitor, from, not compare. Compare is price, from is value. And the most important, you have to believe that the customer is better off having purchased from you. And you can't believe it in your head. You have to believe it in your heart. Head is attached to price. Heart is attached to wallet. You jerk on the heartstring, the wallet comes popping right out of that back pocket. I don't think you get what I'm talking about. How many of you, raise your hand, because I can't see anybody. Raise your hand if you have young children. What's their closing ratio? You see, they're able to connect emotionally, and they can close 100% of their sales. Your CRM helps you keep customers' facts top of mind so you can concentrate on what will genuinely help your customer win. That is the value, the unspoken value of Nutshell, which, by the way, we use. Your creativity differentiates you from your competitors. Not your product, your creativity. Not your service, your creativity. I'm talking about differentiation from your competition. The secret of creativity is contained in your idea, your presentation, and the customer's outcome. Are you walking in with a slide deck or are you walking in with an idea? Dude, I want an idea and I'm going to share with you exactly why. You can create your own differentiation and a differentiation advantage every single time you make a sales call. I did. I refer to it as creative differentiation. But let's take it a couple of steps further. I'm shopping at the store in Venice. Yes, Venice, Italy. It's called Impressa. They had the greatest clothes, the coolest stuff on the planet. And I said, hey, I really need your business card so I can find you online and buy more from you when I get back to America. Take a look at their business card. Is that cool or what? Come on. Boom. Boom. And then he puts my receipt inside the bag. I mean, it was just classic. Have I bought for them for the last 10 years? Yes, I have. He had a creative advantage. 
So it's a differentiation advantage. It is a competitive advantage and it is a creative advantage. A creative advantage is the most powerful one you can have because you can make it yourself every single time you make a sales call. You first differentiate yourself from the competition with an idea. You don't walk in with a slide deck to bore the hell out of people. You walk in with an idea that they can use. What I recommend is send your slide deck to the customer the night before. Like, dude, here's my slide deck. Uh, it's pretty boring. But tomorrow I'm coming to meet with you for 30 minutes and I'm bringing two ideas. And all I ask is if you like them, you run with them. Fair enough. <laughs> You've halfway closed the sale before you ever get there. Capture the ideas that you create in your mind immediately or you will lose them. Text yourself. Keep your phone by your bed or your iPad or a notepad. And the minute you get an idea, you capture it. Where do ideas come from? Oh, that's a real good question. Mine come from my morning routine. I read. I read Thinker Toys by Michael Mahalko, who I've given away so many of his books We've become friends. He has a new book, Cracking Creativity. Get both of them and read them. It's like your mom is holding you in the palm of your hands and teaching you creativity. When you're done with those two books, then you get the benchmark book on creativity by the great Edward de Bono. Serious creativity. Using the power of lateral thinking to create new ideas. You don't have to say, I don't get ideas. That's bullshit. You go and read books on creativity and recognize that how you look at things can help create new ideas. Ideas pull the sale so you don't have to push the sale. I think we're good there. Start thinking of your sales in terms of outcomes, not dollars. And I promise you, you will win way more sales. If you've had ideas before, review the ideas that you've had in the past and think about what happened. What happened to the customer, their outcome. Then visit those customers and see how they use what you sell, your products and your services, so you can get an idea of other things that can help them implement your stuff. But maintain the belief and the understanding that the customer buys you first. The first sale that's made is the salesperson. If they don't buy you, they're buying nothing. Our Arson Sweat Martin in 1908 from the book, He Can Who Thinks He Can, said, the world makes way for the man with an idea. 110 years ago, he nailed it. One of my customers is the National Cash Register Company, founded by John Patterson in 1880. John Patterson was the father of American salesmanship, and I wrote the book, The Little Platinum Book of Cha-Ching, which you can see there on the right, but it started out the Patterson Principles of Selling. I wanted to write a book on the father or the grandfather of sales in America. It's the only book I've ever done research on, and I did it with the permission of the National Cash Register Company. Well, while I was in Dayton, Ohio, doing the research and creating the book, I got a call from a guy and he said, hey, I have some actual books from John Patterson's library. Would you like to buy them? I said, yeah, I want to buy them. Big mistake on my part. I should have said, I don't know if I want to buy them. I could have probably could have got a cheaper price. But the bottom line is I bought them. One of the books was He Can Who Thinks He Can by Arison Sweat Martin, and it was underlined the key passages were underlined in the hand of John Patterson. This book belongs in the Smithsonian Institute, but right now I possess it. I want you to take a look at this. The world makes way for the man with an idea. Underlined by John Patterson, founder of the National Cash Register Company, who made certain his men walked in with ideas, not a sales pitch. You must present your idea when you create one to the point that it is transferable. The customer must say, I get it. I agree with it. I think I can see myself doing this. I'm willing to try it. That's to go forward. It, it, here's a, a clue for you. If nobody talks in your industry, if nobody talks about productivity or morale or loyalty or safety or profit, 
Maybe that's what you should talk about. And maybe those are your differentiators. Because I can guarantee you, if you get in front of the real decision maker, the CEO of the company, productivity, morale, loyalty, safety, and profit are all that he or she thinks about. Think about that. Let those elements be your differentiator. Talk about, idea about, post about, podcast about, Facebook Live about, and YouTube about what is important to them. What is important to your customer will create more attraction than a thousand hours of pitches and deals about you. Once you've proven yourself, then and only then can you begin talking about you. Don't walk in and say, let me tell you a little bit about my company. Don't even think about that. You walk in and talk about how the customer wins by taking advantage of what you have or taking advantage of the idea that you're bringing. That's about them. Then you can talk about you. Your compelling presentation skills earn attention, respect, and help transfer your message. Join Toastmasters. Become a CTM. Just take, do 10 speeches. Let people rate your ability. But there's a better way. Just video or, or at least audio record every presentation that you make. It's the funniest thing you've ever heard. You trying to make a sale. But deeper than that, your love of what you do creates a compelling, passionate message. Do you love what you do enough to where your passion shines through? The questions that you ask emotionally engage and create rapport. Please, I, I'm, I'm a, let me give you an example, I think, which is the best one. You go to buy a house and there's a real estate salesperson and they, uh, they say, I'm looking for a house. And they will either say, do you have a house for sale? <laughs> like, really? Go away. Or they say, do you have a mortgage now? Mm -hmm. How much is that mortgage for? Mm -hmm. Have you ever missed a payment? Mm -hmm. Why are you asking me these questions? I want to buy a house. Well, I'm just trying to help you. No, no, dude. You're trying to qualify me. My rule of sales, do not qualify anybody. Just like them. Because if you like them, they may like you back. Got it? Instead of asking all those stupid questions about um, how much mortgage they have, why don't you ask this one question that's emotionally engaging? Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I need to ask you each one question. Tell me about the bedroom that you grew up in. Oh, baby. Emotion. And everything they remember about growing up in that home floods across their forehead. And then I'm going to say, is that the kind of bedroom you want for your kids? You see, your questions uncover prospects' motives for buying and reveals their urgency to own what you're offering. How soon do you want to move into the home of your dreams? Your questions get you real answers and earn respect. Your questions differentiate you from your competition. I guarantee you your competitors are asking the same damn thing you're asking. Just quit that. Your ideas, the idea that you bring into the, to the sales presentation, get you listened to and talk about. Because if you have a great idea, whoever you're talking to is going to pick up their phone and go, Bob, come here, you got to hear this. If no one says that during your presentation, I guarantee you you're going to be asked to send a proposal. <laughs> and lose the sale or lose the profit. Your ideas differentiate you and prove your value. Your product pitch is largely wasted on deaf ears and could have easily been found online in about three minutes. Think about that. Why don't you review your slide deck and tell me anything that I couldn't have found online. Your old world selling tactics cost you respect and business. What's it going to take to, earn, to get this business? Seriously, that's what you're going to ask somebody to close them? Your understanding of outcome, how your product is used after purchase, is the key to your sales success. 
your price and proposal compares you to the rest. Your perceived value gets you bought at your price. Higher the value, higher the perceived value, easier it is to make the sale. Your perceived value differentiates you and gets you bought again and again without a bid. Now, take note of this because it's exceptionally important. The customer's unspoken risk, not your price, is the genuine barrier, the real barrier that is preventing you from moving forward. That's why people say, I want to think about it, because there's an unspoken risk that you have not yet uncovered. And I challenge you that the unspoken risk is probably right in front of your nose. Maybe they don't want to change vendors. Maybe they feel like they're going to be ridiculed for buying from you instead of from somebody else. Whatever it is, you better uncover it or you're not going to make a sale. Combined with your testimonials, that will lower risk and prove your worth and value. Lowering risk is in equal proportion to more proof. If your customers perceive no differentiating value, they'll compare price and buy price from anyone. And the secret to huge wins is give value first, the value first proposition. I have a marketing strategy that I've used for 25 years. It appears in no book anywhere. I dropped out of college. <laughs> I could have dropped out of any college, but I chose to drop out of Temple University. Went for five years, didn't get my, and I majored in marketing. But all the marketing books didn't talk about giving value first. They only talked about a bunch of formulas that were, I thought, a bunch of crap. This is my marketing strategy. I put myself in front of people that can say yes to me, and I deliver value first. And the social world has helped you find the people that are your potential yes. Once your product or service is delivered, all truth is revealed. Whatever you sold in that wooden box is now glass and wide open. So your ability to deliver beyond expectation gets you talked about and bought again and referred. Woo! You don't have to ask for referrals. People will give them to you if you're amazing. And are you there for the delivery or are you out trying to make another cold call like a fool? Your ability to deliver beyond expectation gets you talked about and bought again. Keep this in mind. Your availability ease of doing business, speed of response, and friendliness create a customer's desire to buy way beyond price. All things being equal, people want to do business with their friends. All things being not quite so equal, people still want to do business with their friends. Combine that with people don't like to be sold, but they love to buy, and you're going to win. One of the secrets is after the sale, staying in touch and Provide continued value. Show me how to build equity. Show me how to increase productivity. Show me how to make more profit. Show me how to be safe. That's what I want from you as a salesperson on a weekly basis so that I realize that I've made the right decision. And when someone else asks me for your product or your service, I'm going to absolutely talk about you because you're top of mind. This creates repeat business, referrals, loyalty, word of mouth advertising, and the law of value attraction. All you have to do is stay in touch after the sale with a value message. Referrals, especially unsolicited referrals, are the report card for what and how your customer thinks of you and how they value you. If they value you and, and, you, and you're risk-free, then they're going to refer you. So you don't need to ask for a referral. That's a dumb way to get a referral. What you need to do is make certain that you are referable. Because if you're not referable, I don't care how many times you ask, they're not going to give you somebody. You learn by clarification of situation and opportunity. You become proficient by taking action. You master by repetition of process. This is the secret that will lead you to more sales than you can ever 
say grace over. So I just gave you a brain full. What's the first thing you're going to do and first thing you're going to implement? You've taken a bunch of notes. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. Do this. Ask yourself, who do I need to become to attract who I want and what I want? If you make all decisions based on the person you want to become, then all of your decisions will be for the best of long term. You see, I don't think end of the month. I think end of time. Much more powerful thought process. I want you to stop blaming other people for the guy wouldn't return my call and start taking responsibility for why the guy didn't return your call. I want you to record all the notes that you take today. It's going to be a phenomenal day for you. Record your notes and make a podcast out of them. Whoa, why aren't you podcasting? Listen to Sell or Die. We have over 2 million downloads. And you could do exactly the same thing. All we do is record in the studio. Right from here, actually. I want you to post your goals on your bathroom mirrors until they become your intentions. Intentions are more powerful than goals. Because if you have a goal and you don't intend to do anything about it, it doesn't get done. Goals and intentions are linked. Intentions actually precede goal setting. If you fall short of intention, you will not likely achieve the goal you set. Achievement and success boils down to one person. And every morning in the bathroom mirror, you're looking at him, baby. I want to thank you for being my customer this morning. And I want to challenge you to go get my Good, Better, Best ebook. It's free. All you got to do is enter the bit.ly. And I will now be more than happy to take questions if there's a few more minutes left. Yes, thank you so much, Jeffrey. That was excellent. We do have a, a quick question from the audience. Um, Alex wants to know, how can a salesperson create a creative advantage in a spontaneous in-person setting? Let's say I meet someone at a conference like this one and they seem like they could be a potential buyer. How do I stand mm -hmm. out during a very brief encounter? Uh, that may be more difficult, Alex. The, the thing I would recommend to you is have an amazing business card so that someone looks at it and goes, wow, this guy's pretty cool. And then just ask for coffee. And if they're far away, then send a $10 Starbucks card and have coffee on Zoom. I would, you don't have to do it immediately, but you have to do it. All you have to do is have enough charisma to get that first initial meeting. And you can do it by showing them that you're ingenious. And if you look at your business card right now and it's a piece of crap, get a better one. Well, my company won't give me one. Ask your company to get you a better one. And if they won't do it, you have your own money now. You can make one yourself. Excellent advice. Well, Jeffrey, it's been such an honor having you a part of Boundless 2020. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, folks, we'll be yeah, back in. Totally, totally fun for me. Oh, it's been wonderful. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments with John Barrows.